Just the other day, we had announced to us a brand new Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel Forbidden and Limited list. This one goes into effect April 11th, and the sentiment of it is, well, mixed. Commonly, we hear a lot of people use the phrase, the worst list I've ever seen in my life. I've seen that once or twice over this one, but I want to pose the question, is it really the worst list we've ever seen? Master Duel has been around for two years now, and in its two years, we have had an abundance of Forbidden and Limited lists to change the way the game gets played monthly. So what I have today is I have a tier list involving every single Master Duel ban list that has been released to date, and we are going to be ranking them on just how awful they are from S to D. All right, chat informed me I should probably have an F tier. So, so now we have S through F. If it goes in F, means fucking why even bother? What I have in front of us is I have the first forbidden and limited list uh, ever released to the Master Duel game. Obviously, one of the biggest things was Maxi was at three in this format. Uh, it is a playable card in the game, which single-handedly shifts entire metas around it. Some would say that's already enough to put it in F tier, but the game has developed and adapted around it. Vanity's Emptiness was also a card limited to one down here. Absolutely miserable to have in any format of the game. As you can see, it's banned literally everywhere as it should be. Uh, Calamities was also a miserable card to deal with with Virtual World in the format. Uh, this card, of course, again, banned everywhere as it should be. Altogether, I remember the, the general like consensus for this list was people were like enthused and also extremely disappointed, mainly due to the fact that Maxi exists. You ask anybody today and Maxi still being at three is a disservice to the game. But you know what? Every game has got to start somewhere, right? But what does that put it on our tier list? As much as I'd love to rate it higher for nostalgia purposes, because I really did enjoy those first few weeks, I think we have to be humble and somehow put it in like an A or a B range, right? It could have been really bad. They could have just like actually copy and pasted one of the formats and i think at the end result that would have alienated an entire half of the player base altogether i want to put it in b tier i feel like it was a, it was a good start right it could have been even more disastrous but the way they handled it was unique they gave us really truly a unique format to play in and uh, I'm glad it's kind of panned out in its own way. The first official Forbidden and Limited list was uh, published on April 24th and went into effect on May 8th. And these changes fucking suck, bro. <laughs> Limited was Conquistador of the Golden Land because Eldritch was tearing things up on release like we talked about. And Ben 10 was a menace with Drytron running around, right? Apparently, my, my chat's telling me about Burn was a real problem. I remember it being... Uh, the only way I remember Burn ever being a problem is self-FTK bots. Um, but apparently this was an issue. Fusion Destiny 2 was almost laughable because Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer was going to be released around the corner, which was probably a preemptive hit towards it, but Verte Anaconda is legal. And you know what? Verte Anaconda generically gets you into Fusion Destiny. Roxy's going to 2 was the biggest meme because people were just like, why? What does this hurt? Apparently this was supposed to hurt Ad Emancipator, being that you could summon Roxy's and go into Meow Mew, get another Roxy's from deck. And draw a card, you know, cycle. That's pretty good. But, like, you're only using two Roxies to do that. <laughs> and then what, going to three was Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon. I'm almost positive this is after its errata. Altogether, uh, for the first ban list, a lot of people expected a lot of things to get changed because there were clear outliers from day one. But... Uh, this didn't solve, like, almost any of them. A lot of people thought this list was a joke. And if this was a sign for things to come, uh, Master Duel was notably not gonna be taken care of well. A lot of people would probably say this is an F-tier list. But, like, <laughs> I don't know if it's- I don't know if it's that bad, right? No, it's probably that bad. It's- it's pretty bad. Trust me when I say everybody thought this list was bad. Uh, we'll put it in deer for now. Next ban list we got was an interesting one because it set a precedent. And that was, it was a preemptive hit to two cards that were going to be released in the newest pack. A lot of people were kind of confused about this. Like, was this going to be a regular thing that they were going to do in Master Duel? Hit things before they even come out and even get the chance to show how powerful they are? What if they're not problems? What if what if they're just like, okay? Was limiting them even worth it at that point? Setting the precedent that there's going to be hits before the cards even come out. Where do I put this? Where, where How do we evaluate this? I've never been a huge fan of... Uh, preemptively banning or limiting something. I, I actually don't like it a lot. So that being said, I'm going to put this in like C tier, I think. Uh, I definitely think like, even if you just let this live for a month, what's the problem, right? Like, let them stay at three and then afterwards try semi-limiting them. Or you can even go further than that. If you limit it after that, I don't care. Just let the cards breathe at three. This list was published on August 23rd to go into effect at the end of the month, August 31st. Cards that got forbidden. Oh my God. Celestial put from three to zero was a huge deal. 
Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer packages tend to stick with just the best Destiny Hero cards. This is kind of an interesting hit, because if you still look today, we have DPE, Verte Anaconda, and Fusion Destiny still able to play, but now the targets are significantly worse. It's not something you want to just be generically tossing in anything. Imperial Order put to zero, and Vanity's Emptiness put to zero. Holy shit, thank god. These were cards that, from release, people could tell was going to be a problem. And then also, True King of All Calamities, going from 1 to 0, completely axed any hope that Virtual World had, but also got rid of one of the most annoying cards to try to deal with in a best of 1. All of these bans, game-changing, and all of them definitely game-improving. Pot of Prosperity, going from 3 to 1 was a huge deal. This is where it remains at today. And it's kind of interesting because it's unique to Master Rule, right? Cross out designated from three to one is super interesting. Uh, we're in a format with Maxi, keep in mind, and Maxi is literally in every deck. Uh, so this is already removing more options to be able to stop the Maxi Wars. Skill Drain put to two wasn't as major as I think people hoped. A lot of people were already realizing issues with having certain floodgates in a best of one. Just made for not good Yu-Gi-Oh. So this was a this was a great one. I'd say this is probably one of the greatest of all time. One of the goats. I think we can all agree, chat, right? This is an S tier for sure. There was a lot of gripes that people had with initial master rule. And this this literally solved them, right? Calamities, IO, Vanity's Emptiness, all these cards were miserable to play against. So removing them from the uh, equation definitely brought a lot of people back. At this point, we had already seen master rule ban lists coming out once every month. Which, if you've played Yu-Gi-Oh! in any other sense, if you've played it in TCG or OCG, you know that is, like, spoiling us. That's really good. This list was insane because clearly from the first card, you can tell that the format completely shifted. Christron Hauka Fibrax was finally removed from Master Duel as it was removed everywhere else in the game. Hauka Fibrax, if you've never summoned or read this card because it hasn't been around in a long time, this card consistently made strategies plausible just by its existence alone. So removing this card from the game was only a matter of time, and I think everybody was elated when it happened, myself included. And then also Spellbook of Judgment had come back to one. I think this is the first time, funny enough, in both TCG and OCG that we saw Spellbook of Judgment released at all, right? This is one of those cards that you would read and you're like, wow, that card is insane, right? But it's one of those things you don't truly realize that it's time in the sun has passed until you actually get to play it again. Which is kind of sad to see because this card still reads like an anime card. And then the semi-limits is sort of like them getting closer and closer to solving the problems, right? Rivalry and Gozen Match had both gone two. We already talked about the Floodgate problem in a best of one scenario. A lot of decks might not just be equipped to deal with that. Trishula is at two. Why is Trishula at 2? I don't understand. Why is this card still at 2? Put it to 5. I don't care. Put it to 5. I don't care. Looking at these old lists, like, really reminds me of some of the crazy shit that they just had there. Like, Dragon Buster literally didn't matter from going to 2. Pankratops had gone from 1 to 2, which was a huge deal. Now it's at 3, and nobody still plays it. But obviously, the point of this thing is, like, in a best of 1 scenario, it's harder to find room to be able to fit this guy in. Altogether, I could probably just put this into S tier because of Halka Fibrax alone. I think this list was uh, amazing just for that. That card ruined multiple formats of Yu-Gi-Oh for, for many people. Uh, just seeing it leave all formats of the game was something that had to happen. For Halka Fibrax getting banned alone, I'm gonna put it into S tier. Yeah, let's see what people said. Spits on Halka Fibrax dead body. I guess Mastral completely thought the game was in a pretty good spot because these changes were super minimal. We had seen Strategist Long Yawn put to two for some ungodly reason, putting the Magnificent map to two as the only Fluandri's hit. They still had Barrier Statue, all the Rise of Loops, everything at three. And then remember all these cards were at two at one point, they just decided, oh yeah, like that really didn't do anything. You might be thinking just what people thought back in the day. Actually, you know what? Let's go see what they were saying. Not a huge update, but honestly, for getting frequent ban lists, I'm happy with. That's the mentality you should have. Yeah, I think this one might have to be our first, why even fucking bother, right? Like, <laughs> How do you guys feel? Would you rather have a list that changes like nothing? Like that where you're just questioning all the changes? Or would you rather have them just say, actually, there's not going to be any changes this month. Enjoy it. Thank you for enjoying Mastral. So after one of the most disappointing lists we've ever seen, we're hoping Konami can redeem themselves. Did they with the next one? They fucking did. The Fluanderies deck was super irritating in a best of one when they put up the Barrier Statue of Stormwind. I think at this point they did get Advent added to the game. Uh, so that just boosted their playability a little. You remove their one super infuriating floodgate to play against, but the deck's gameplay loop was still super frustrating in a best of one. Galatea to two opens up a lot of combos with those Orcus decks. Some of the old school combos would require you to summon Galatea twice in a turn, so they weren't really plausible in Master Duel. Birdman to two 
never really mattered. I think this was only limited as a result from a really, really old school FTK. If I'd have to rate on this one, I would probably give this one like a solid B. This one... It's already a banger. It's S tier because the wind-up carries and Mighty went to three. The limits. Yeah, putting these cards to one definitely would solve problems, right? Block Dragon to, to one. Keep in mind a card like Union Carrier still exists. All of the Ad Emancipator decks are still just as frustrating to play again. My chat has informed me. I don't remember seeing a lot of Pendulum FTK back in the day. I feel like it, uh, you only played that deck if you hate yourself, I guess. But losing to any FTK in a best of one scenario is a great way to turn people off of your game and get them to uninstall. Demise had gone to two. Just a really frustrating card that I'm so glad is like banned now. Was Orphus Scorpio at one? Was this card at one? Definitely, right? Brilliant Fusion's at one. Yo, nobody's playing that card? I, I, why do I feel like I didn't know that? <laughs> what are you sending? Trick Clown and Garnet. And I'm summoning Seraphonite to get my normal summon. GG. I feel like this is another one of those B tier lists, like a, like a low B. Great changes in this one. Oh my god. I, well, one rest in peace to my man, totally awesome. I don't know. I still think this card should be in Master, bro. It always catches me off guard when I remember it's not there. And then I have to remind myself it's legal in the TCG. Union Carrier getting banned. Thank god, though. Holy smokes. I always like seeing the cards that are banned everywhere because it really exemplifies that, like, some cards just probably would have been better if they weren't printed. This is a card that I've always loved because... This card actually forces people to change the way they build decks just to accompany it. I've always been a huge fan of this card, just in general. So seeing it go to uh, less than three uh, definitely reminds me of better times. Okay, There Can Be Only One was the next floodgate that they said, okay, we forgot that one. Let's take care of that one. Again, this is another one of those lists where, okay, we got rid of a really annoying, irritating floodgate in the form of Union Carrier. I remember the big thing you could do was equip Dragon Buster Whelp. And that would stop your opponent from special summoning. But on the same vein, they got rid of my boy totally awesome. That's unforgivable. I want to say A. Is it an A tier one? Is this our first A tier list? Yeah, I think this one, I think this one maybe deserves an A spot. I think this one can get an A. All right, this was another one of the weird small ones. We were just on the verge of getting sprites into the game. Uh, sprites were meant to be like a huge meta contender right out the gate, I remember. Uh, and to sort of qualm the, the oncoming storm, they said, let's just put starter to two and that'll solve everything. Ancient Fairy Dragon had uh, recently gotten errata, so this card could go to 80 copies in every deck for all I care. Blaster going to 1 was actually insane because before this, the only Dragon Ruler we had seen put back in the game was Tempest, and that's because Wind is an attribute just happens to be the, the weakest attribute. Change of Heart also went to 2, which was um, kind of a cool thing. This is another one of those cards where it feels like it's better in the side deck, but in a best of 1 where there's no side deck, how are you going to find time to play it? B for Blaster! How about that? B for Blaster. I think that's fitting. All right, picture this. It's the Duelist Cup. You have the best players of all time playing the game, trying to get their spot at the World Championship. We had just seen Sprite get released. Remember, starters at two, so it should be totally manageable, right? No, Sprite was still one of the best archetypes as well as branded. So what deck did people choose to play to try to earn their spot for the World Championship? That's right. You guessed it. The best of them all, Runic Stun. Runic Stun was a miserable strategy where in best of one, it really exemplifies a lot of the floodgate problem. If you don't have the correct out, even if you do, if you have like Harpy's Feather Duster, cards like Hugin and stuff could protect the back row and make the game incredibly frustrating. Exciting to see Harpoor at three, still didn't make Orcus the playable deck. Dragon War at three, I don't remember this card being limited. Clearly a forgettable list. I didn't even remember it. I think I'm gonna put this one in C. I don't think it's bad enough to put into D tier. We've talked about removing like problematic floodgates or just problematic cards is, 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 is a step in the right direction. Next list we got was in April. Let's check this one out. Oh my, I think we got another S tier one inbound here. Obviously the big limits are finally the floodgates going to one. Putting them at two didn't solve it, right? We were seeing runic stun everywhere, flipping up your rivalries, your gozins, the floodgates you can't beat. Orange light was limited because of the Ashizu cards that had just gotten released. A little bit funny that they decided to break it up where we got tier limits after we got the release of the Ishizu card. Saw Fountain go to two, which has never been that prominent of a hit. It's always been searchable and some decks would only play two Fountain. But the two Runic Tip was a little bit nicer of a uh, consistency hit because uh, Tip gets you any card in the deck, right? Necroface had gone to two. I'm like almost positive there was some degenerate Necroface FTKs going around. Oh my god, yeah, look at this mess. Literally like, look at that Thunder Dragon Roar coming in at three. 
actually mattered there. Here, I remember the combo involving like Doomsday Horde. Um, Super Poly had gone to three, which was actually going to be super relevant for the upcoming tier limit format. Galtea and Judgment were already clearly able to come to three as well as Quick Fix. This one was pretty cool because now you could machine dupe for the full three of them. Not that it made Spiral any better than it was already, but um, it was cool to see. You know what? I'm willing to put this one in S tier. I think this one was fucking amazing. Having those floodgates limited to one was the beginning of the end for all the annoying decks in the game. Before this forbidden limit to this, though, we had seen another preemptive hit. This one was for the Ashizu cards that were just around the corner. They decided to get ahead of it and semi-limit all of these ones, Keldo, Agito, and Kelback. I think at the time, though, you could have probably let these cards play at three. Just let them ride for a little bit. What do you guys think? But I guess it's like better than nothing, right? I guess it's a low D. So now, you have to put yourselves in the scenario about early April here. Master Roll is about to have released to it one of the strongest archetypes we've ever seen in the game, Tier Limit. Before the deck came out, they got ahead of it and decided to preemptively hit some cards. A lot of them. On release, Tier Limit still ended up being the best deck, but I, I don't know if I could rate this like a why even bother. For all intents and purposes, this was probably like still a really good decision to preemptively hit as much as they did. Um, but I don't think I'd rate this any higher than a C tier. For this ban list, you have to place yourself in the game at the time. Tier Limit was absolutely crushing every deck that competed with it. During the DC Cup at this time, you had either two options. You played the Tier Limit mirror matches all the way through until your brain turned to mush, and then at that point, you would pilot Spidey. So a lot of players were curious how they would address the first Tier 0 problem in Master Duel uh, with the ban list coming out. Forbidden after this, they decided to get rid of Instant Fusion. To be fair... Great choice, honestly. This was a miserable card to deal with because Instant Fusion could summon your Tier Limit Kikalos for free. King of the Swamp? What the fuck it? Why? They're like, oh yeah, that'll fix the Tier Limit problem. Now they can only play one of their King of the Swamp, a card that they frequently played at zero copies prior. And then some of the things we saw unlimited were things that probably just could have happened for a while. Kagari at three was actually pretty sick, uh, putting Sky Striker at essentially almost full power outside of Engage. But, like, I've always stood by that I think Tier 0 formats in card games is something that you have to at least experience. Worth, even if at the time we were in a format that was dominated by one of the best decks, uh, I'm, I'm biased. I fucking enjoyed the format. I loved Tier format. I'd probably safely put this one in the C tier, right alongside the pre-hits for the, uh, the tier limit. Didn't completely solve the problem and still let it go, which upset a lot of people, but also, you know what, made me happy. And that's all that matters is making me happy, right? So we're still in the midst of a tier zero tier format, but there's a savior on the way. The Bestials were a light in the dark, being able to help temper the power of the tier limit strategies, being able to be DD Crows with additional upsides. But unfortunately, I guess Master Duel felt that they were too good to be at three in one of the most dominant dark formats ever. <laughs> I remember just being extremely disappointed with these being put to one. So I think I'm going to rate this one at like a... I'm gonna give this one an F. So another hit deeper into tier limit format. In tier limit strategies, I remember Mount Fuji, multiple Chalice Slime monthly winner, uh, was using Cyberstein to pay 5,000 of his life just to summon Kikala. You also had Naturia Exterio, which we saw coming out of this guy, which could negate spells and traps almost for free, essentially. I had to check with chat. Uh, I remember Smoke Grenade of the Thief was really strong in TCG for Infernoble, uh, but in Master Rule in particular, it wasn't that. It was uh, with a card called Power Tool Braver Dragon. And then Terraforming had also gotten banned. Remember, we were already seeing people try to find clever ways with like Foolish Burial Goods and the Crystal Beast Trap card to be able to find their field spells, but Terraforming was the most generic way to it. A lot of the tier mirror matches, people would say would be dependent on who saw their Paralino. Keep in mind, Paralino's at one. So if one tier opponent was able to see their field spell and the other wasn't, uh, the game was already almost a wash at that point. We finally got to see both of the shufflers, Medora and Keldo, put the one. Remember, Medora was sticking around at three initially. We also saw Agito put the one, which is funny that this is the one that got put the one when Kelbeck is actually, I still think, maybe better. And then the cards getting semi-limited, we saw another one of our sprite hits finally with blue to two. Remember, the only other thing is starter is at two at this time. Servant had gone to two. I'm pretty sure Servant was at one before, so this is slowly breaking it out of its shell. Uh, and then Ben 10's kind of crazy because keep in mind, this is a change that had happened. This is the first time this card went to two after being at one from the very first Master Duel ban list. I would say it's not maybe one of the greatest, but it's a high A. It's a, it's, it's a 
like right, it's above the other one. Again, we're still in prime tier limit format, but we're on the verge of releasing a couple new archetypes that might shake up the game. One of which is being Labyrinth. Labyrinth is a trap deck, which is not super fun to see in best of ones, but they're able to search any normal trap out of their deck. And one of the traps that is searchable and that is a nightmare is Eradicator Epidemic Virus. So Bastardal decided to get ahead of it and limit Epidemic Virus. I just said this card was searchable. You can set it from your deck. So if you can resolve it one time, you've probably won the game on the spot. Some of the other stuff was like, okay, though. Mpenda 1 was kind of based, honestly. Fluandries was still playable at this time due to the fact that Tier Limit was the most dominant deck. Uh, you were able to play cards like Dimension Shifter, uh, Dimensional Fissure, I remember, and Macro Cosmos were hopping up in these decks just to be able to counter them. And Selic the 1 was fascinating, I'll say that. Branded Fusion... I'm super biased and I hate the branded decks, so any sort of hit to that is fine. Semi-limit wasn't the end of the world, you know, you still get to see it pretty often. We had just seen blue go to two and jet was another natural hit, I guess. Uh, blue and jet are the best ones. And then swap frog was the go-to package that you would play in um, these the sprite deck. As cool as it was to see these cards hit, there was another very important card released this month that completely injected new life into not only the sprite deck, but also the tier limit deck. That card was Sprite Sprine. This was pretty good because you could Foolish Burial Nimble Angler in the sprite deck, and when Nimble Angler sent, you could summon two beavers. But the main thing you would use this for was also in the tier limit deck, you could just send Merly from your deck to Graveyard, and sending Merly allows you to make a fusion. Altogether, this list was, um, I remember this being kind of a stinker. Again, this is like, people are so tired of tier limit at this point, and seeing a hit so small, so inconspicuous as Celiac to one, was just making people angry at this point. I think if you really had to ask me, this list was probably like, it, it, I, it, no, it lines up. I think it's, I think it's an F. We got a really small one. I don't think this one, uh, it was sort of like preemptive, I think, for, for Dark World coming out. Okay, Expulsion from three to zero, banger, right? Like, this was super, super miserable with, I think, like, uh, Gimmick Puppet Lock. I don't remember Dark World being, like, particularly that annoying. Even in the OCG, right? I see why they banned it, because the potential to rip all of your opponent's cards out of their hand is not fun to play in a best of one. But, like, was that worth, like, banning the card, though? I don't know. Do you think you actually would have gotten hand-ripped from Dark World if this card was at three? Everyone's saying yes. Okay, apparently I'm wrong. Apparently, apparently this was a great fucking change. <laughs> you know what? Y'all are right. That's an S-tier list. There's only two cards on there. Hard to fuck it up. All right, this next list, holy shit. This is a fucking banger. This one's crazy. Ranga Miniad, even after seeing Gossip Shadow get put to zero, which solved a lot of the earlier things, I'm pretty sure Sales Pitch came around, or Sales Ban came around at this time. Agito finally got banned. Now it sits proudly next to its two shufflers, Keldo and Medora, both at one. And then we also see Kelbeck go to one in this list too. Uh, Bish Balkan is just, uh, it's an FTK card. That's literally all you have to know about it. It had been a while since Block Dragon was put to one. But all of the decks that I remember this card being in were, like, super, super, like, degenerate. And Merly getting banned, this was one of the best hits for Tier Limit, because we had just talked at length about how good Sprite Sprind was being able to dump this. Branded Fusion to 1, S Tier List. S tier list. It was S tier before this, but this makes it even better. Sprite Jet and Frog, they had gone from 2 to 1 both, so I guess they just said just get rid of another copy, that'll fix the problem. And then Luster Pendulum, the Draco Slayer. I'm pretty sure this card was at 1 before, and this card could be at 5. Nadir Servant goes to 3. Funny enough, you can see it doesn't stay that way for long. This ban list was amazing. Like, I don't know if I could use a different adjective to describe it. Put that boy in there. Rest in peace, Block Dragon. Can I get some Rip Bozos in chat? I don't know if you would consider this a ban list, but we got another one of the preemptive hits, and this time it was literally only one card. It's just really funny to see how it, like, translated that Dino Wrestler Pankertops came to three and nobody would play it, because it's probably a side deck card, but Cash Terra Fenrir, because it can search a copy of itself, would make it an absolute menace to play in every deck. I think this might be, like, a B-tier hit. This is, like, a really good... This is one of the best preemptive hits, I think. As small as it is. We had just gotten the first wave of Cash Tira cards, and we had already seen Diablosis locks coming out by the plenty. They decided to remove Diablosis from the, the game, which I can imagine being a new player and having every single one of your zones locked. I, I think you would never play the game again. Havnus is uh, known to be one of the better tier limit names, being a hand trap. And then Nimble Beaver put to one was actually a really big deal too, because now off of Sprite Sprind, you don't have a great send. Like sending Angler 
uh, doesn't get you too beaver anymore. And then unlimiteds, none of these literally matter. Um, Bamboos and Gossip Shadow is hilarious because they finally banned Ranga Midiad. I definitely think this is a, an A tier list for sure. After that A tier smanger of a list, we ended up getting a, uh, a smaller one, right? A little more brief. Triple Tactics Thrust had just come out in the game. And being able to generically set any spell or trap from your deck could create some really, really, really awful gameplay. I've heard this card described as like a better trap does shoot. And uh, yeah, I'd be damned if I didn't agree with that. These cards, long past their prime, probably could have happened ages ago. As small as this was though, it was for sure necessary. Like having a pointer into the game for any more length period of time after thrust being released uh, would have been awful. Uh, I think this is like a... I think this is like a high B tier for me. Cash tier support was actually broken up into two different sets. The preemptive limits, they decided to put pressured planet to one, which is solid because like, if anything, this would have just been a generic way to get to one of your two Fenrirs, right? And they also decided to limit tier limits cash tier, which good choice considering we had just lived through an entire era of tier limits. I'm pretty sure people wouldn't want to go back to that. I'd probably say this is like a... Like a C or a D. I'd probably say like, I, I would even put this at D, right? All right, I'll, I'll, we'll bump it up to C tier. We'll bump it up to C tier. We've had some good ones recently, I think. Uh, is this one of those? I don't remember this one being that great. <laughs> there are some cool things about this. I will say Zodiac dried into three. Definitely got a lot of people excited, but it did not perform. Quick launch went to two. I think just despite Trishla TV, honestly. And then Chaos Base to two as well. Barely, barely hit the Dragon Link deck. These hits were kind of massive for Pearly. Pearly was a really, really strong deck on release, but the big one was Delicious Memory going to two. Having this card at any number other than three drastically changes the math for it. I still think Labyrinth is one of the most boring decks to play against in Master Rule, so I, I, I'm always upset when I see it playable. And then the limits, we had Diameter to one, which thank God I, I, I'm not a fan of this Math Mech deck either. Altogether, I remember this list being received not well. Let me see what they say, actually. What do they say here? They got the wrong math mech. Everybody wanted circular band, honestly. No flu hits. Let's get him next format. I would definitely probably rate this one at a D. All right. I think we have another S tier list on our hands. This one. Oh my God. Oh my God. This is post DC Cup. And I remember this one very, very vividly because I participated in this DC Cup. After DC Cup, they decided to completely warp the format again, and all these changes are great. Chaos Roar was like the glue holding the Dragon Link deck together. Being able to summon this not only would let that deck be good, but it also enabled a lot of degenerate strategy. And then Wyver Buster, we were just talking about like Black Dragon and Wyver Buster both being at three. Banning Wyver Buster obviously makes it completely like worthless, right? Hard to demise, obviously stupid stun card that you would see banning it necessary and then uh this was a preemptive hit for super heavy samurais around the corner soul breaker armor is used in like an ftk where you can burn your opponent for a bunch of damage the limits we talked about a few of them already fenrir we're going to one uh again it has massive consequences for it being a generic card all the stun cards and different variants getting put to one uh pot of duality had finally gotten one and pot of desires i think almost every pot card is at one in the game now right and the delicious memory we talked about it going to two matters a lot for the math it going to one matters even even more for the math. Dragon Roars were essentially at full power again. And that was something crazy to see because we hadn't seen that since the cards got initially banned many, many years ago. Terror Top to three was kind of sick. Wasn't this at one before? This list is, uh, this list is awesome. It's a banger. It's a guaranteed S. I don't even have to think about it. Let's drag it all the way up there. Do we even have to talk about this one? Why, why do I not even remember this one happening? Also, I will say I hate branded decks. I, I'm biased. I really, really hate those decks. So seeing this to one is also really nice. I'd probably put it in D tier. Uh, not really that impactful. All right, we're coming up on the end here. This was the, uh, the list before the most recent one. They limited branded opening. Honestly, great because I hate that deck. They finally brought back Water Enchantress to its initial released amount. They said you can finally have Water Enchantress back at two. Chat, has anybody seen any Water Enchantress on the ladder? <laughs> no way y'all are saying yes. And what? What rank are you guys playing in right now? What are you guys talking about? <laughs> and then Parallel Exceed to two is actually huge. Unlimited, Meow Mew is finally free from the chains, and oh my god, thank god we can play three King of the Swamp again. I was so worried that we never would see the day. We don't have a forgettable category, but I'd probably throw it in like C tier. I don't think I'd put it any higher than that. It's, it's like sufficient. But it, it's nothing to write home about. Finally, after all that stuff, it brings us to today. 
We had a, uh, a recent ban list and a lot of people were upset about it. Now that we have the foresight, now that we've been able to document the rest of Master Duel's history and accurately tier list the rest of them, let's see where this sits. Performer Pal 5 Rainbow Magician put to 1. Interesting. This is very frustrating currently with Super Heavy Samurai. It is an instant you lose the game button if you play it. Wagon to 2. Absolutely crippling those Super Heavy players, I know. Nadir Servant went back to 2. Remember, we saw it go to 3. Hash Tira Unicorn goes to 2 and Birth to 2. Uh, Unicorn was at 3, and I'm pretty sure Birth was at 1. From 1 to 3 seems like a big jump, but... It realistically won't do anything. And then the pretty memory actually is super legit for the pearly decks because, again, it affects the math drastically. Wait, what's the comments for? What are people saying today? Ban list is a joke as usual, aside from Unicorn. When did we decide ban list started becoming a joke? We just looked at several fantastic game-changing ban lists. You know what? As much as we tend to complain how bad the lists are, look how top-heavy some of these ban lists are. This one maybe didn't do the best job. I would probably put it... I'd probably put it in C tier. If I'm going to be honest, I'd probably put it there. But to be fair, I still think, is there more good lists than bad ones? Yeah, look, the math checks out. There are 15 good lists as opposed to 14 bad lists. So you know what? Maybe after all the complaining, they're doing a pretty bang up job. That's like barely passing, right? Like <laughs> D's get degrees, huh? No, it's C's get degrees. <laughs> There's a lot of reasons to complain about Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Rule. There's a lot of things that they, they could be doing better. As bad as it seems sometimes, maybe the one thing they do have under control is the Forbidden and Limited list. 